About a half hour south of Tucson, there is a hole in the ground. People flock here to Saurita to see it. It isn't often that you get to stand right next to the largest nuclear weapon that the United States ever deployed. It isn't really often you get to stand next to any nuclear weapon, you know, and so there is a kind of wow factor in that. So up in the nose cone, there is a single, very large hydrogen bomb, a thermonuclear weapon. It, is, it, has a, it has a yield of nine megatons, which means that it has the equivalent explosive power of nine million tons of TNT. This preserved Titan II missile site, officially known as Complex 571-7, is all that remains of the 54 Titan II missile sites that were on alert across the United States from 1963 to 1987. Big Red Safe is called the EWO Safe. EWO stands for Emergency War Orders. A lot of the crew used to call that the Go to War Safe because there's no reason to open that unless you're going to war. Two combination locks on it, one for the commander, one for the deputy. They know their own combination, but they don't know each other's. So they both have to agree to get inside the safe. The missile could launch from its underground silo in just 58 seconds. The Titan II was capable of delivering a nine megaton nuclear warhead to targets more than 6,000 miles away in about 30 minutes. We have three targets, three pre-programmed targets that we could launch against. They are targets one, two, and three. Their locations were classified and unknown to the crew and remain classified to this day. Targets are selected from the commander's console right here, just a matter of pressing one button or the other. Uh, each target of the three can be set as an air burst or a ground burst, depending on the kind of targets we're gonna go after. And this big thing is called the MAGAC, the Missile Guidance Alignment Checkout Group. This is how we tell the missile where it's going. All the targeting information was fed from the MAGAC to the guidance computer on punched tape, like this. So before, before floppy disks, before cassette tapes, before punch cards, there was this stuff. Um, state of the art back in 1960. Nowhere else in the world can visitors get this close to an intercontinental ballistic missile that's still pretty much where it was, how it was during the Cold War. This is the secret unlock code for the missile. And the message sounds like this. Pass that around if you would. Pass that around if you would. Open this up, pull out a card inside. If the code word on this card that's been in the safe all these many years matches the code word they just sent us in the radio, then this is not a drill. This is a legitimate order to go. The complex was built of steel, reinforced concrete with walls as much as eight foot thick in some places. Several three-ton blast doors sealed the various areas from the surface and each other. The top level of the silo lets you see the silo missile doors. To make good on an agreement between the U.S. and the former Soviet Union, the silo doors are permanently blocked from opening more than halfway. The dummy re-entry vehicle mounted on the missile has an obvious hole cut in it to prove that there is no longer a bomb inside. But one of the most fearful and fascinating features on site isn't something you'll see. It's a sound. This is a Federal Thunderbolt Model 1003 siren. It's a dual tone siren. Um, Federal installed literally thousands of these across the United States during the 50s. Uh, they were originally thought of as air raid sirens. Until just a couple of years ago, this electrical box and the horns on top this tower were pretty much forgotten. Chuck Penson and a friend got curious and then they got to work. Took some cleaning, oiling, wrenching, and tinkering to get it back to life. There's a control box right here. And inside the control box are all the controls we need to uh, turn on the blower, uh, the uh, chopper, which is the rotating shutter. And we can actually make the siren go around uh, like this also. There's no set schedule for running the Thunderbolt. Usually it's fired up 
no more than once a month. When it does, it gets lots of attention, sometimes too much. Yeah, I heard it, so I want to get out. The day of our visit, it got people calling the Pima County Sheriff's Office. Deputies showed up to check it out. And the reason it was put in is because of a very serious accident that happened at a site like this in Little Rock, Arkansas, in which ultimately the missile exploded in the silo. And so they thought, hmm, maybe it would be a good idea to have a, a way of warning the kind of local population that something's going on at one of these sites that they might, they might want to get out of town for a little while. We don't run the siren on a regular basis. Uh, so when we do run it, we try to time it so that we run it for a group that's just come up from underground or maybe for a group that's just going to go underground. And so they get to really experience it, you know, uh, firsthand. Most visitors wonder, what was it like to be part of the crew that might have launched the missile? To have, as they say, your finger on the button. It takes two keys to fire the missile. Put a key in here. Well, the there is no button. There was a key. Two of them, actually. Keys are far enough apart that not even a long-armed guy like me can reach them both. Keys must be turned within two seconds of each other, and they're spring-loaded, so you've got to hold them in the turn position for five seconds before the launch will start. That guarantees that two people will be required to do this. On each underground tour, one visitor gets to follow through on turning the key that could have started World War III. And now it's payback time, Commander. So what you're going to do, you're going to use your left hand. You're going to be give me a countdown. Three, two, one, turn keys. Try it once. Three, two, one, turn keys. Excellent. When you get to turn keys, we always invite one of our guests to sit in the commander's seat and give us a countdown and turn the keys. Uh, and I have had people uh, refuse to turn the keys, even knowing that it's just a simulation. Uh, I've had people actually cry uh, at that prospect. Uh, so uh, it does have, I think, at some level, a very, a very uh, a significant emotional punch. I think what people are, what people always come away with here is a sense of kind of awe about how enormous this weapon actually was.